Watercolor painters, you are in for like a giant treat today. Tony White in Australia, what are you going to do today? Hi, Eric. I am going to show everybody two techniques that will make your watercolors fresh. So what I thought I'd show, you, show everyone today is um, a couple of techniques that'll just, just good, to, uh, good to refresh your memory on and good to remind yourself of every once in a while. Or and we might not even know them, you know, people like me that, might not know them. Well, that's right. I mean, it's, it's more a mental game, really. It's just a matter of reminding yourself to do the right things as you paint or the, when I say right things, I mean, you know, there's no right or wrong, really, but it's um, these are tried and true uh, methods that'll uh, get you some nice fresh watercolours because the last thing you want to do is overwork anything. Um, but what, I'll, what I want to do first is just... Uh, Give everyone a bit of a rundown of my materials. Um, just people love that stuff. You know, you've got to yep. give the people what they want, Eric. You've got to give them what they want. Um, let's have a look. I'll go brushes first. Let's have a look at brushes. I'm using mostly uh, Neef brushes. They're an Australian brand. Uh, they make, I've, I love these ones, the Thomas Shaler Signature Series. They're just a, a long pointy mop. Um, that's a prototype, a little flat one that I use sometimes. There's a dodgy foliage brush that I just... Can you move them up a little bit higher? Oh, there sorry we go. about that. Yep. There we go. Um, and, yeah, they're just... No, there's a, an Escoda is snuck in there, just a little perler for small stuff. Um, uh, Robert Wade flat brush, you know, there's... These ones here, this one's good. Uh, it's a, a strange kind of rigger slash dagger. It's a Anders Anderson signature brush. And... Uh, and of course, Alvaro, all Alvaro Castanet's brushes are uh, Neef, and that's one of his little riggers, little needle points that he uses. So Neef brushes are fantastic. Oh, fantastic. And there they so, go. There they go. That's all right. I caught it. It was disaster averted. Um, but they're, they're fantastic. So check those out. Um, paints, I use Daniel Smith. Um, I'm not, you know, uh, brand ambassadors for any of these. I just use these because I think... They're the best. Um, paper, I do use Bao Hong. Uh, it's a Chinese watercolour paper that is very economical in comparison to some of the other brands um, and really great once you get used to it. I use the, the cold press, so the medium texture. I use the rough sometimes, but their rough is very rough, so it's a particular style of painting. You, you want to get stuck in with that, but uh, the medium is good for me. and. I'll just sort of show you my colors. Um, good I don't way. Think to... We need to go through them one by one. I think. Don't need to go. Cool. No, let's not. We we don't have a lot of time today, so let's just. Yeah, cool. You can post them later in in the comments. Yeah, for sure. No, no problem whatsoever. I'll um, explain a little bit about them as as I paint, but uh, realistically, um, I just think about the warm and the cool stuff. Anyway, doesn't really matter what the name is on the tubes so much, um, but. What I want to do is show you, obviously you can see the reference photo there in the corner. Um, what, what I want to do though is simplify that. And this is what we should always be looking at. Simplify that into big shapes, middle shapes and little shapes. So that's how I look at it, big, middle and little. So big shapes here for me are your water and your sky. That's usually the case, your ground and your sky in landscape paintings. Um, the middle shape is this one, which is you know where all your activity is really. And the little shapes for me are things like the rope on the on the uh, little log, uh, the just the tiny little bits here and there. And we'll probably put in a little splash of red somewhere, make something up to uh, bring it all to life. But that's why you got to think and don't get bogged down in thinking that I need to paint every single tuft of grass and all that kind of stuff. So we don't want that. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Um, I'm going to start painting. Now, cloudy skies for me are uh, great fun. Now, this is just water at the moment. I'm just putting it down in random spots 
so that you've got some wet paper, some dry paper, and uh, you'll catch different effects as you go through. So just get stuck in. I'm not I'm not too worried about not too worried about the outcome. You know, like that's the I think a lot of artists get bogged down in the outcome. The process is where it's at. So if you if your process is and by process I don't by any stretch mean be a formula painter or anything like that. Uh, what I mean is the the joy of painting, the actual painting itself. If you get that down and you you fall in love with that, the results will take care of themselves. It looks like you have a piece of masking tape on your on the pole. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, look, I I don't use masking fluid very often. Uh, when I when I do, it's just tiny little things here and there. But with something like this, this pole, I wanted because it's got a it's a fair it's a fair uh, element. I wanted to mask it off so I could take care of these washes and masking tape's just the easiest easiest way to do it. Um, look, Eric, I'm I'm pretty lazy and I'm lazy by nature, and I think that um, that lends itself to watercolors beautifully because if you can do things quickly and to the point, then you're uh, you're winning. And so I just find the easiest way to do things and and give it a crack. Your buddy. Tim Oliver says, go, Tony. Hey, Tim. How are you, mate? How are you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, if anyone's got any questions out there as I paint, absolutely, please yeah, join in. Yeah, just put in. them in the comments and I'll, I'll read them. Absolutely. Nah, good stuff. So with the sky, that's done for me. You know, the, the sky is not the major part of the painting. Once again, simplifying. I'm not going out there and looking for every single cloud shape or anything like that. I'm not getting my bogged down in uh, in every little detail and get oh that cloud's not there. That's not good. No, you get you just paint and get stuck in. Just you have it. your uh, cam your your paper at an angle. Yeah, so slightly. It's probably hmm, I don't know what angle it is, but um, it's probably slight. about it's a slight angle. Yeah, it's just a gra gravity helps. Gravity helps. It's one of the few areas in life that gravity does help, Eric. So we need to uh, need to enjoy that while we can. Um, but no, you need need that gravity, I believe, to uh, force the washes down the page and and have stop them from pooling so much on your on your paper. And no, nah, it's all good. It's I couldn't do it without a without an angle. Some people do, and I, I freak out. And I just go, hey, how do you do it? It's crazy. But no, I need all the help I can get. Let's have a look. Yeah, this so that looks like, like an Indian yellow. This is a uh, Hansa Yellow Deep. All right. It's called Hansa Yellow. But as I say, all, all Daniel Smith stuff. I forget the names of some of them sometimes. But... Um, I always experiment with different colors. I have my staples like your burnt siennas and ultramarine and things that I couldn't live without. But, um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of yellows and some reds and things I do experiment with, for sure. So, so all I'm doing here is I'm just getting this undercoat. I'm treating all of this first wash as an undercoat, and I'll start bringing things down. Big brush, you know. Don't. That's another thing about simplification is we don't. We don't want to use little brushes for big areas. That's what I see. When when I've sort of had this thing with my students over the years of don't just little brushes are stupid, but they're not stupid. They're just they're stupid in the way that some people will try and paint this wash with a small brush, you know, because they think they'll make smaller mistakes or something. I don't know. Um, but you realistically, you've just got to be confident and get the uh, get the paint on the page as quick as you can. Um, so this is obviously just the undercoat of what we're doing. So and up here, all these trees are. I'm thinking of the lightest tones, the lightest part of the tree, and that's what I'm sort of putting in. And 
Yeah, a little bit careful here and there. It doesn't matter if anything goes too crazy. One thing about but, watercolor is you have to be really, um, you have to plan, you have to think in advance. Absolutely. That's, that's right. And that's where people, you know, like the, the best watercolorists, I believe, in my opinion, um, paint fairly quickly, but I guarantee you they've thought about it for a long time. Um, and that's why I always look at it. I, I always say, uh, think for as long as you like, but when it comes time to put the paint on the paper, do it quickly, get it done. Uh, it's imperative to have a plan, but it's also uh, con somewhat contradictorily, it's also imperative to be able to stray from that plan when watercolour does its own thing. So don't try and force it too much. Um, what, I'm gonna, what I've got to do now, Eric, is just give it a, a little bit of a dry off. We're all dried off. All right. Um, what I am looking at doing is starting background to foreground, basically. And this is sort of where it gets pretty sort of quick, you know. It's not too, not too big a, uh, a journey here. So one thing you've got to remember, these techniques that I was talking about to simplify, is this distant hill, for example. Perfect example of uh, where a lot of people will get bogged down and try and make everything just be perfect and exactly the same going oh look i can see i can see there's like a little bunch of houses over there so let's just paint them all in nah it's just rubbish so you all you've got to do <laughs> all you've got to, it's crazy that the things that people you know stress themselves out about it's i want to point out something it. out too to people who might not realize this when you put that dark next to the white of the boat or the yellow of the boat, it's going to make that yeah. boat stand out even more. Absolutely. And that's, that's right. And when the, uh, when the reflections go on like this, the second coat of, of uh, reflections to bring that boat out, uh, it, uh, that's the thing. You've got to keep your eyes on the prize. You know, don't, don't stress too much about um, every little, don't, don't worry about this little bit as you're painting it. Just get it on the way you go. It's a background and treat, treat it as such. That's the, that's the thing. Treat, treat the areas like they deserve to be treated. And that's, you know, it's not with contempt or anything. It's just be realistic about what you're trying to achieve and away you go. So you your are. focus, you're, you're going to put the most attention and detail into your focal point. Yep. That's right. And, and the focal point, it's, it's basically where all the little nitty gritty bits are. You know, that's the way I kind of look at it. Um, this, I wanted, I wanted to take the the reference photo here. I wanted to take the focus a little bit off the the bushes and the grass and things there by um, simplifying um, in this little area, but also so I can make the boat the standout focal point rather than have it compete with the light that's on these. Um, but all I'm doing here, like this, this is the thing, hold your brush right down to the very end. So you've got minimal control and just make it look a bit natural, a bit organic. And away we go. Put the paint on. Now I need to get some darks down here as well as, you know, finesse a few little things, but get some sepia or something. Sepia is nice. Just put it on. A lot of people I see, um, you know, this is just my opinion, I suppose, on, on this, but a lot of people I see will get scraps of paper and scraps of white paper and they'll test on that, test their colours on that paper uh, before they paint. Um, all the while their painting is drying, um, so it's, you know, losing its uh, intrinsic watercolour charm, so to speak. Um, but you're not painting on white paper. You're painting against the colours that you've already got down on your page. So it's it's a little bit of a pointless exercise doing the whole white paper thing. But um, just do a bit of a test on your page and away you go. Life's short. You don't, you don't have to worry about getting into all that stuff. You just, just paint and you'll be right. So just getting a couple of colours in. I want to make the contrast a little bit stronger with the distance there. Just on this little edge here is fine. Yeah, if you get if you get too dark, it's gonna not read like distance. Yeah, that's, that's right. 
Yeah, exactly. Tricky. Exactly. So you got to you got to layer it and remember uh, remember your drawing shifts with watercolor. That's that's a really tricky part of watercolor is you know learning what the what the how the paint's going to react when you depending on its viscosity when it hits a certain moisture level of paper, um, and that's just something you can you kind of can't teach. You've got to learn by doing that sort of, that sort of thing. It's a feel that you you develop. Sometimes you get it wrong. Um, it's happened many times, but you've got to develop that and use your palette. Use your palette to, you know, there's a reason that they're white is you can use them to to gain a feel for your paper and um, and the, how it's going to react. And, you know, just get stuck in. Fail many times. Don't be scared to fail. None of it's failure. Look, I always put it this way. Even if your painting didn't turn out very well, you're still ahead of the person that didn't paint today. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Now here I've just got this uh, needle brush, a little rigger, and I've got no paint on it, it's just water. And I'm holding it right down the end and I've kind of got the shakes. I get the shakes, just there we go. And it's just gonna leave some textural marks behind. You know, and your hand is moving pretty well for a guy who's up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, I've got it right, mate, I love it. Nothing more, nothing better to do than paint. That's all right. Well, um, I'll do this any time of day. It's fine. And the good thing is the kids are asleep, so there's no risk of them coming in and ruining our day. No, just joking. I love How many kids do you have? What ages? Uh, they are seven and four. Oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, crazy. They're, they're uh, crazy little kids, but... Um, no, they're, they're good value. I love them. They're let's all crazy. Have, <laughs> let's have a look. What I'm want, wanting to do here is I want to get start work on the boat. See, I'm looking at that now going, well, that's okay. That'll be enough. And the thing is with watercolour, if it looks right when it's when it's wet, then chances are it's wrong. So it's it looks a little bit strong, but once it dries, I'm confident that that'll recede. Enough. That's a that's a great quote. So if it looks right, it's probably wrong. <laughs> if it looks right when it's wet, it's probably wrong. Yeah. So you've got to always paint a little stronger. That's why a lot of people's watercolors end up looking a bit weak and insipid. It's just because they're just not pushing it hard enough. It, and if you push it a bit harder when it dries, you'll be you'll be okay. Um, but it, it, like anything, it doesn't always work that way, but. It's um, it's a good way to get your head around it a bit. Now, this boat, we still don't want to get bogged down. I'll say that, I'll use that terminology a lot, but um, I just want to sit it on the water a bit. So I've just got a bit of, it's rubbish. I couldn't even tell you what colour that is, but it's a bit of uh, natural sienna and whatever grey or rubbish is hanging around the palette, basically. Uh, just to dull it down a bit and I've just got a bit of water that I'm softening things with and I'll put a bit of bit of texture make the boat look a little bit uh, a little bit used a bit dirty and as I say a lot of this is undercoat so you might not even see some of it but it's all part of the process and you don't want to do too much on this side, especially because it's the it's our light, it's our major light source. We uh we want to uh, want to be nice and subtle there. Um, that's good, and just going into a little bit of sepia. Not thick enough, not enough paint. I either it, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but I either pick up. You know, a hundred bucks worth of paint on a single brush, or or not enough. So always struggle. All right, there we go. That's good. So that'll that's just going to filter out a bit and do its thing. That's fine. Um, and I'm constantly looking. Here's another. This tips for free, Eric. Don't don't go in and out of your water jug all day. Your water tub. 
because you've got moisture on your palette already and chances are it's from your painting that you that you're currently doing so use that moisture where you can i've got a bit of bit of gray there now it's probably not going to be strong enough yeah it's all right it's not too bad um but use that because all you're doing when you every time you go in and out of your water jug all you're doing is diluting the paint and therefore diluting your end result somewhat so you know. so here's yeah. a question from rob yep. and i don't know where he is uh it no says worries. can mistakes be corrected when using watercolor such as making an eye too big or would you have mm. to start again uh, uh somewhat like there's there's a myth around that you just can't correct anything in watercolor that's a bit of a myth but um it's difficult it depends on the scale of the mistake something like a an eye in a portrait or something is oh yeah that'd be tricky um to to correct it depends how early in the process it is if, if it's early on and uh it's still damp just blot it out absolutely it might Somebody not be told enough. me the other day, depending on the paper you're using, if you're using, yeah. uh, I don't remember which it was, cold pressed, I think, you mm -hmm. can take some water and kind of almost erase things by putting water in there, dilute it and, and wipe it out. Yeah, you absolutely can. The um, it, It'll just be what pigments you use that you've used in there because some are stronger than others. So, for example, um, Cobalt blue doesn't lift out very well. It's yeah. just real, real strong. Um, but yeah, some some do and some don't. But uh, the important part is, I always sort of think of it like this: is when you make a mistake in watercolor, absolutely give give it a crack, try and fix it. Um, if it doesn't work, it's just another opportunity to do it again and paint and yeah. learn more. That's the that. I mean, it sounds a bit flippant and a bit glib, but it's just one of those things that. Every time you paint, you learn something, and and uh, and if you make a mistake, then that's just a learning process as well. Okay. So it's never ne there's never never a wasted painting, that's for sure. Thanks for the question, Rob in Newcastle, England. Now it's Cookie Kate's. Is sepia a color to be mixed, or can it be purchased pre-mixed? Uh, purchased pre-mixed. Mine just. Yeah. I mean, you can uh, obviously. Um, buy it on its on its own absolutely but if you mix it i would uh, it's a bit it's a bit tough because it does have a certain strength to it but uh burnt sienna and ultramarine with more well, mostly burnt sienna would, would come close um i like sepia for its uh it, it's a pretty dirty color uh, it'll stain things really quickly but um yeah, it's it's one of those ones that you you're better off just getting it in the tin and use, using it. And uh, you you can mix it with other colors too. It's a really good mixing color, um, just to dull things down a little bit if you need to. So yeah, it's got a a few little quirks, but it's it's one of my favorite colors. It's becoming one of my favorites. All right. Now the boat's doing its thing. That's all okay. What a careful of any hard edges but that doesn't matter see this bit here this hard edge that's going to be reflections soon so it doesn't matter that's the thing don't get bogged down in that stuff because you go well i'm going to cover that in a second so it's fine life's good let's have a look i've got second coat of reflections okay yeah this this is where it starts to come to life i always leave a bit of a a line at the horizon, a bit of a white line. It just seems to give it a bit more of a glow in the, in the distance. But you can see now just by just by putting that colour down there, that bit of bluey grey colour, that it's already uh, getting this boat locked in and popping out at us. Now, pointy brushes, imperative, imperative for reflections like this i believe um because you've got to have that control you want to be able to flatten it out and do a big mark and and then use the tip to put a bit more finesse in here and there and i am just 
putting a few marks sort of it looks sort of at random and i suppose it is but i think with mostly with reflections if there's, if there's any real tip i could give with reflections it would be to keep your brush strokes fairly horizontal um reflections go all sorts of directions because of the wind and all that kind of stuff absolutely but um and we observe that kind of thing when we're painting plein air but it's generally looks better in pictures in paintings when uh they're all sort of flat and horizontal that's good advice and, it's something that joe mcgirl told me when we were out plein air painting one day he yep. said even though your horizon or you know you might have an island or something that looks a little bit angled he said it, it'll read better typically if you keep it flat especially in the distance yeah uh, absolutely it, it just does i mean the, unless you I've sort of found unless you're doing a painting that is someone specific, say someone's sitting in a boat and they've just turned around or something like a little dinghy and they've just turned around and they've left a, uh, uh, you know, the concentric rings on the, you know, ripples on the water. Um, those, those sort of marks, uh, that's fine because it reads fine in the context of the picture. But um Generally speaking, you could be watching, looking at this picture on a any given day, and the wind's different, and the reflections are going a certain direction. But I don't know. I've just always found it looks better. Whenever you try to yeah. du duplicate reality, it gets you get a bit stuck. I think. So, yeah, oh, that's reference. really reading that that back mountain really reads like distance. It's just so beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's it's amazing when it comes together, and that's why when the more you paint, the more you get confidence knowing that it'll all come together. You know, so, you know sometimes it doesn't. Don't get me wrong, but um, but the more you the more you paint, the more you practice. I hate using the the word practice, I, I, even though it's exactly what it is. People get scared of it for some reason. I don't I don't see it like sitting down to practice the violin after school or something. It's um, you just just paint it doesn't matter what you're doing just paint something and and you, and you know you're it. painting you're having fun even if yeah. you're struggling you're having fun absolutely where, where else would you rather be exactly right that's why I'll, I'll look at it and you'll you'll get better a lot quicker if you uh get obsessed by it uh, do you play golf eric uh i try not to yeah i oh, know <laughs> um People who play golf will know that it quickly becomes an obsession. And I think there are a lot of golf uh, widows out there. Um, it becomes an obsession. And that's kind of what watercolour is yeah. for me, is that I, I just dream about it. It's, it's kind of sad, really. <laughs> but, um, no, no, it's, it's wonderful. And, and that's why I don't play golf is because I'm obsessed with painting. Yeah, and that's if, right. If I have time to go out, doors and spend two hours i'm going to be painting instead of golfing yeah that's right that's my priorities have changed over the years absolutely i might be on the edge of the golf course painting yeah oh that's beautiful subjects beautiful subjects um what i've got to do i'm sort of at the end of this little section so um I'm just going to darken up this a tiny bit, this reflection, just a cup, just drop a couple of little bits in. I don't want to make too much of the reflection here. Um, I do want to just strengthen it so that it, uh, it reads a little better and different to the other side. But um, I, don't want to, I don't want to put any sort of hard edges or anything like that. I want to keep it nice and soft because I know the, the edges from the reflection that I do from the pole is going to be are going to be nice and strong. So just a little bit of subtlety in there, and because there's a lot of water around in on the paper, I'm aware that it's it's going to dry up a lot lighter, and I, I don't want it to be too too weak. And well, I'm just, anxious to see what you do when you peel that tape off. <laughs> yeah hopefully uh re realize that i've put it on properly strong it has to be pretty dry when you do that otherwise you're going to get the, wa the water bleeding into it aren't you yeah absolutely uh i do have to dry this off uh real quick though won't won't take long this hairdryer is quite powerful 
But uh, okay, I'll uh, I'll take another quick break and we'll be right cool. back. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm finding it mesmerizing. I I have really gotten into watercolor lately. I just I'm just going nuts with watercolor, and I still paint in oils. Uh, but you know, I go I have these moments in time when I just don't feel like you know, putting all my colors out and going through all that nonsense. And so, but but my watercolor, I just leave it set up, have a separate easel set up, and I just start painting in watercolor. It's wonderful. And I'm also doing a little of that in pastel. All of this has been driven by watercolor live, pastel live, et cetera. And so um, I hope you guys will join us for watercolor live. I think it's going to be really outstanding this year. The audience is growing like mad. It's Mm -hmm. insane. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. And uh, let's see, I probably should tell you about one other thing. And that is that um, the videos that you see here on Art School Live are mostly with artists who are in their studios on their cell phones and so on. But when we produce our videos for PaintTube.tv, we have over 600 professionally produced art instruction courses that have, you know, like pro quality cameras, not consumer cameras, but pro like the kind they use in Hollywood. And uh, we have people who've been in Hollywood who've done major films and we, you know, we really try to do it right. Great sound, extreme close-ups, really, really crisp, high definition quality. And so that's uh, what you can find at PaintTube. And right now, if you go to PaintTube this week, uh, there is on the website, a uh, some Christmas specials. Uh, it's 12 days of Christmas. So there's different special every day. But there's a lot of good deals on there. And by the way, all the prices are going up January 1 because of inflation, unfortunately. But we have to do it. But we're keeping them low. And we've got a lot of stuff on discount right now. Uh, also should mention Plein Air Convention is coming up. And we're pretty excited about that. That's going to be in Denver in May. And uh, we're just kind of waiting so we can announce our celebrity guest. We were told soon after the first of the year. So we're just kind of fingers crossed on that. But um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, and if you're a, a member of our, we have actually two levels of VIP at the Plan Air Convention. One of those levels sold out the first day we offer it. And that level, they're going on excursions and uh, tours to art studios with me and some others. And uh, But that sold out. But the other VIP gives you front row seating, gives you special privileges, a lounge where you have access to some things. Uh, you get to participate in some some dinners and stuff, and you are going to get your picture taken with this celebrity, which is going to be pretty cool if you're VIP. Okay, we're going to get back to Tony. Tony, are you ready? All right. I'm ready, mate. Absolutely ready to rock. So you can see that the tape came off nice and successfully, so that's good. Uh, what are, how are we doing for time, Eric? Uh, let's give you – we'll give you another 10. Ah, uh, cool. Perfect. All right. I'll get my skates on. So here we go. Um this is why I wanted to mask this area out um, to leave so I can work purely on white paper just so I get this nice bright light on this left-hand side as we look at it. Um, if you don't mask something like that out, yeah, you can lift it out and all that kind of stuff, but it's not just not going it's just not going to uh, not going to read as nicely. You know, just taking a little bit of care with that. I don't care too much about whether it it's precise or not, but I just want to make sure all I'm all I'm looking for is making sure that I keep this edge, keep this edge, absolutely, but uh, just make sure we get the nice gradation across. Um, and just again with clean clean brush, tiny bit of water in it, I've just you know, up and down, get the shakes a little bit there and uh, you get a bit of texture and that's always handy. And you can see that that's starting to read three-dimensionally almost. Okay? So that's a good sign. Just move that across a bit. You always want to be squinting your eyes. You know, it's an old trick, obviously. Everyone does it or should do it if they don't. But, yeah, step back, squint your eyes and you'll you'll soon see uh, the things that aren't working and that way you can just fix them and let's have a quick look just got a little bit of a, uh, a line as it sits on the water there and 
let's get a reflection going down here. Now, I didn't bother masking the bottom out because there's sort of no need to, because it'll be, the reflection is going to be stronger as, as usual. It's not always the case, but uh, reflections are usually stronger in tone and value than the object that they are reflecting. So let's make sure that works. Well, also some of your ripples are kind of showing up underneath, so it feels like it's on the water. That's right, exactly. Um, and you, that's the thing you got to you got to have that transparency. And uh, if you if you start losing the transparency, then that's when um, it doesn't become or it doesn't remain a watercolor. You know, you've got to got to have those intrinsic values with watercolor and exploit those, exploit them, you know, like these, you know, water and paint moves around on its own with watercolour. So you you must at all, by all means and at all costs, you must take advantage of that because um, it just makes your life easier. And that's that's all okay. So it's reading, I'm looking at, looking at that now and it, it is not strong, quite not, not quite strong enough, sorry. Um, I'll just move that again. And while ever it's wet, you can go for it. But that's all I want to do there. So now I'll just focus on this boat. Bear in mind the time I'm I'm going to get stuck in, make it happen. Let's finish it up. So little details in the boat can start to, to come in. And let's have a look. I don't want too much. I don't want any of these, you know, big lines or anything, the the panels on the boat. I just don't think it needs it. But I just want a a couple is okay. But I wouldn't wouldn't get too bogged down. Uh, and one thing I'm looking at here is I just want this top of this boat just to read a little bit stronger and that just that pushes the distance back again as well because it's against that all right so we're looking good so i'm curious how you're going to do that rope because the rope is <laughs> great you wait and see it's, it's a bit well, of magic you don't have much time you better hurry i know up. i know i'm not pressure is on baby oh jeez that's no good. <laughs> yeah, I just wanting just wanting to just get a bit of extra tone in there for the uh, the reflection, and in there as well, just so that everything reads a bit better, a bit nicer, and I'll just. Put it on, kill it a little bit, and that's always handy. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I, I can't. I can't think of a better way to spend my morning than watching you. This is your mesmer. Uh, oh, cool! Thanks. It's uh, look, it, it's fun, and I, I try not to take myself too seriously, but I try also. My workshops and classes are always a fun affair because you know we, we learn a lot, but I think you learn you learn more when you're having fun, whatever it may be. Yeah, so, we're going to make sure we put all that in the uh, in the uh, comments. Ah, cool, good stuff. Um, yeah, all right. Let's just little bit of sorcery, bit of sorcery. water. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely magic. Love it. Ah, so you can you can correct mistakes. Yeah. yeah, you can. Sometimes you do it by design. So with this, like you could have mastered out with masking fluid, but you end up with a, a hard edge, and this just ends up softer and nicer. Do you so, ever use uh, like a gouache white to lay? Yeah. Over? Yep. Sure do. I'll. Uh, I will use some in this as well. 
right. but it's just for for me it's just i got no problem with it ethically some people have a bit of a purist sort of mindset with the whole gouache and watercolor thing but to me life's short you know get the job done however you like um or have you, however the goal you can. is to get a great painting that's right exactly right and for for the viewers i i haven't looked at my reference for you know half an hour probably so that's the thing you get get caught up in your painting don't get caught up in the reference because yeah. your goal is to make the painting work not the reference the reference is already there so the painting is something we're creating and that's what we're after so a bit of shadowing and it'll read properly in a second just put it on kill it a little bit that's not the end result by the way but a little bit there the rope look the rope's gone a bit thicker than i would have liked but that's okay and that's the thing you know you could you could almost put a matter. second black line in it and make it too like it's two two ropes you know absolutely right absolutely and what we can do is we are i do need to quickly fix this it's too weak and while it's still a bit damp i can go for it and i'm well aware of the time all good we're almost there yeah well i'm i'm gonna keep going but we're almost cool. there almost there almost I guess another way to thin that line is just to add more of the texture from the trees behind it, underneath it, yep. to carve it out. Yeah, absolutely. You could, no, uh, no problem at all doing that. Um, what I'll do, and I'm hoping that a bit of a highlight will um, will sort of settle it down a bit and be okay. Now, I'm just using a colour called Buff Titanium here. It's uh, sort of a creamy sandy color daniel smith color and it's not it's quite subtle it's not as it's a bit opaque but it's it's not quite uh not quite as bright not quite as bright as like your jean brilliant and things like that not quite as yellow um so get that in now i need to just two more things two more things i want to do on here now i've got I'm not using gouache, but not that I care, but I've just got some titanium white watercolour here and it's it'll sit there and that'll keep the purists happy because it's watercolour. So that's good. <laughs> you always want to keep them happy. You don't want to... Don't Are there any purists watching today? And if so, let's hear your comments. <laughs> oh, do I want to hear that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is Tim a purist? I don't know. I can't remember. I, I think he's, I don't know. Tim, what are what? you? Are you a purist? <laughs> Barbara Tapp, are you a purist? <laughs> a lot of good people watching today. Oh, cool. Good stuff. Now I, uh, I hope everyone's enjoying themselves. That's what it's all about. Yeah, how could we not? I mean, this is fabulous. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, yeah, I've just, got... Thank you. It's good fun. And that's the thing with watercolor. It comes together quickly and it, uh, yeah, it's entertaining when, when it's done properly. That's for sure. Love it. Um, just a bit of red straight from the tube. And this is not in the reference, of course, but uh, we'll just, we can make something of that. And it just, just gives the eye something else to go to. That's all. Nice. Wouldn't do any more than that, like just a little bit. You don't need, don't plaster it with color. Um, and the very last thing I'll do before I take the tape off is like a couple of birds in, a couple of birdies in. And always remember people, I know it sounds silly, but birds don't just fly up above the horizon. You know, they're, they're everywhere. So whack them in. And if, Either you've got to do one or, you know, 12 or 13. <laughs> like it's just one of those things that if you do two birds, it looks a bit funny. Um, all right. 
Oh, oh, that's fabulous. Why don't you come back on camera so everybody can see your smiling face? Oh, geez. Oh, the magic happens when you pull the tape off. All right, let's just do that real quick, and then I'll come straight back to the camera. Oh, that's beautiful. Ah, oh, thank, thank you. Applause. Applause. <laughs> Thank Let's you. See. Do I have any applause? I don't know what I have. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more appropriate. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on today and 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 uh, getting up at four o'clock in the morning and and uh, and being there for us. And and you mesmerized me. I think a lot of people in the audience were mesmerized as well. What a fabulous oh, painter you are. Uh, thank you very much, Eric. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. And a nice guy and so humble. Uh, yeah. We hope to see more of you. We'll see you at Watercolor Live next year. Uh, Can't wait. And that's that's exciting. And we'll get you involved in some other things, too, because you're so good. Excellent. No, excellent. Right. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, if everyone out there watching, just follow me on Insta and YouTube and all that. Just search my name and Watercolor. I'll come up everywhere. Okay. Tony White. Tony Watt, th thank you so much, Tony. It's a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Eric. Yeah.